Now, the Russians have said they are only interested in liberating, liberating at this point in time Russia, which means the right bank of Kherson will be Russian, Zaporizhia will be Russian, Donetsk, Lugansk will be Russian, but the Russians have put a little caveat on there. Back when we gave the Ukrainians the HIMARS, the high mobility artillery rocket system, uh, 80 kilometer range, the Russians went, well, now it's going to be the territories plus 80, you see, because we have to keep you out of artillery range. We're never going to allow you to fire artillery shells into Russia again. So we're pushing you back for 80 kilometers beyond the borders. Congratulations, Zelensky. You just lost a whole lot more territory. But then the geniuses, they said, hey, America, give us even longer range stuff. So the Americans are talking about giving them this small bomb, uh, you know, this, this advance at 150 kilometers. Well, all that's going to force the Russians to do is go 150 kilometers in. And now rocket scientists, um, take your little compass, go to the map, get the scale, and then just start drawing the arc rings around the border and see what 150 kilometers is and understand that's pretty much the territory that Ukraine is going to lose forever. That includes Kharkov, probably includes Odessa. Um, you know, this is the end of Ukraine. I think the Zelensky regime is a regime that has empowered uh, the odious neo-Nazi ideology uh, of Stepan Bandera, the national hero. Uh, the Ukrainian armed forces sing songs in his honor. Uh, we can go on and on and on on that. Uh, so I have no sympathy for the Ukrainian government. But my God, my heart bleeds for the Ukrainian people. Not the ones in Western Ukraine. Look, if, you're, if, you, if you put up a statue of Stepan Bandera, F-A-F-O, okay? You're going to find out. It ain't going to end pretty for you guys. I am telling you right now. The surge is coming for you, but it's the people that wanted to live their normal lives. The people that went to work, had a job, have a wife, have kids, have parents, grandparents, and they just wanted to live their lives. And those lives are over. Ukraine is being destroyed right now as a modern nation state. And that's something I predicted early on. I said, this war, when it ends, there will not be a Ukraine. It's coming true. They've already lost 20% of their territory. They're getting ready to lose another 30%. I mean, it's mind boggling how Zelensky claims to be the president who cares about the Ukrainian people, but he's overseeing the dismemberment of his country and the slaughtering. My God, two, 300,000 troops dead. That means that there's a whole bunch of wounded guys, too. And modern combat wounds aren't, you know, a nick, a scar. You're losing arms, you're losing legs, your brain's addled. Guys, you get gut shot. What do you think happens? All right. It ain't the movies. Oh, I die. Pre no, boom, you're gone brains out. I mean, it's real, guys. It's real. And they're getting slaughtered. They're getting butchered. Not just the Ukrainians, too. The Russians are suffering casualties. Not on this scale, but the Russians are the Russians are suffering more casualties per day than we suffered in the Vietnam War at its height. And it broke the back of America at that time. But the Russians are soldiering on. Um, but this is just tragic. And what makes it even more tragic is the United States and NATO made this war happen. There is only one. That's why when people say, oh, we can't let these people speak at the rally because they're pro-Russian. No, 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 guys. We're just calling it as we see it. This conflict is about good versus evil. And let me tell you right now, the evil out there is the United States. The evil out there is NATO. And if you don't recognize that, then I don't want to have anything to do with you. Because if you're trying to pretend that this war wasn't predicated based upon a decision made in 2008 to invite Ukraine into NATO, then you have no clue what you're talking about. If you don't understand the role played in 2014 in the Maidan coup d'etat, don't call it a revolution, it was a coup d'etat, ousting and how the United States handpicked these people to govern, knowing that they were closely aligned with the neo-Nazis of Sloboda in the, in the right sector, and then turning a blind eye as they declared war on the ethnic Russians. In April, they passed a law calling ethnic Russians terrorists, and they unleashed the Ukrainian army on them. Okay, if you don't understand that, then I don't want to talk with you because you don't know what you're talking about, and that's half the problem here. All the people out there, they're saying, I'm anti-war, I'm anti-war. They don't know what they're talking about. You don't even know what anti-war means. If you think anti-war means pacifism, you don't have a clue about reality because pacifists die. That's the truth. Passively get gets swamped by Hitlers. They get swamped by Imperial German. They get swamped by Banderists. Pacifists need people like me who are willing to step up to the plate, draw the line and say, not one step further or I will slaughter you because I am not a pacifist. I'm a warrior. You want to take me on? You will lose. But I also understand that you have to 
fight for the right cause. There has to be just cause for this conflict or else war is just murder. War is murder no matter what. Your humans are killing humans. It's the worst thing that could ever happen to mankind is war. We should never want to go to war. But if we do go to war, be on the right side of history and win. What we're doing right now in Ukraine is evil. It's pure evil. We are, we are, we claim to be the friends of the Ukrainian people. We claim to be their friends. And look at what we've done to them. Yeah. If this is friendship, man, I wouldn't want to be in love with the Ukrainian people because God knows what that would turn into. Um, we're not the friends of the Ukrainian people. We don't care about the Ukrainian people. We put the flags on our social media. We put the, we, they fly everywhere. I see the flag. flag. Really, guys, that's how you treat your friends. You let the U.S. government allow them to be slaughtered on the battlefield. You're destroying. There won't be Ukraine when this is done. How much do you love Ukraine? And the answer is you don't. Want to know why? Because you have no clue what Ukraine is. Anybody who puts that flag up there, I can guarantee you, I could interrogate them for five, two minutes. It would be clear they don't have a clue what they're talking about. They don't have any grasp of history. They don't have any understanding of the underlying issues. They just put the flag up there because, you know, they're trying to, I forget the term that's used when you, uh, when you project that, uh, you know, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm projecting that I'm a good person. You're not a good person. You're a moron. Moron for that flag, flag. Look, if you honestly know the issues and you put that flag up there because you're sincerely with the Ukrainian people, I apologize. I apologize. You have every right to do that. 